Hey, hey, y'all. Welcome, welcome to the channel. Thank you all so much for supporting me here at Andrea Speaks TV. Hold on, y'all. Let me get my sweater. Oh, this is not it. <laughs> That's my daughter's. What did I do with my sweater? Hold on, y'all. Here it is, right here. <clears throat> okay, welcome, welcome. Happy Saturday evening. Uh, the sun is starting to uh, go down here in my area on the east coast, southeastern United States to be exact. Y'all, um, <clears throat> I found this story and I said, wait a minute. I need to uh, go live and talk about this. So as you come on, please make sure um, that you say hello. Um, you can leave a comment or comments. I just appreciate you all for taking time out of your Saturday evening to tune in and support me here on the channel. Y'all, we're living in a time where there's so much going on, right? There's so much going on. Have you thought about what it would be like if banks, okay, with everything going on, right? Inflation, talks of a recession, all of these all of these different things have you thought about what it would be like if you couldn't access your money at the bank what if you couldn't even go into the local bank and withdraw money now I can't confirm these reports but based on my research I'm seeing where there are people who have said they have actually had this experience but I want to come on and let you know that in the country of Lebanon, okay, in the country of Lebanon, banks are actually shutting their doors. Think about that, y'all. Think about being in a position where you have your money, you know, you have an account at a bank, account or accounts at a bank, and you need to go in and you need to make a withdrawal or whatever amount to take care of whatever you need it to be whatever you need you know to take care of and you're denied access to your money think about that let me tell you that it's happening right now in Lebanon okay make sure as you come on that you like this video share this video and if you haven't subscribed to the channel I want to invite you to subscribe listen y'all Again, anytime, you all know right here on the channel, I've covered world news before. Thank you to those of you all who are watching now live or if you're watching uh, the replay. You all know I've covered world news. Um, as a matter of fact, I have a world news playlist right here on the channel. You're welcome to check it out. Um, and any, I've always, I always say this, right? Anytime I report on world news, you know, you may say, well, Andrea, I don't live in Lebanon. I don't either. I'm here in the United States. But when I do report on world news, okay, the goal is for, or you know, my, my whole idea behind sharing the information in the first place is for you and I to both say, hey, wait a minute. Look at what's happening in that country over there, right? If something like, for example, in this video, the topic if banks are shutting their doors, denying access to funds, denying their customers access to their funds that they legitimately, that they legally have at the bank. If they can do that over there, overseas, who's to say they can't do that right here in America? So I'm not trying to scare you, okay? This is not fear mongering. I just simply want to share with you what's going on okay a real situation according to reports the article i'm referring to is cnn okay um i just want to make you aware of what's going on overseas in lebanon in the country of lebanon and i want you to think okay if something like this were to happen here in the united states <laughs> what would i do about it or better yet what do i need to do now in order to prepare if something like that were to happen here 
in the United States. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the article. Thank you all so much. Those who are watching now live or by replay. Uh, please let me know where you're tuned in from. I'm here in this great state, the wonderful state of Georgia. Um, a lot is happening now. You know, we talk about a lot of topics here on the channel. And um, my whole goal and inspiration in the first place for creating the channel uh, was so that it could be a place of um, a source of news and information so that you can, you know, see what's really going on, ask questions, find solutions, share, I share solutions with you all so that you can make a plan to protect, provide for your family in the current times that we're living in. So I want to share this story with you, right? Um, the story comes from CNN and the title of the article says Lebanese. Okay. This is a country of, um, Lebanon and so the people are called uh, Lebanese just like we are called Americans okay Lebanese banks to shut indefinitely after a flurry of holdups okay let's let me uh, read to you what's been going on in the country of Lebanon y'all okay according to the article again this is from CNN my source is CNN Lebanon's banks Lebanon's banks are to remain closed indefinitely due to ongoing and i quote risk to employees and customers okay this is according to the association of lebanese banks who made this announcement this past wednesday okay now according to the article thank you thank you for those who are watching now live i appreciate you all please make sure you like this video share this video and i would like to invite you to subscribe to the, to the channel so that you can stay connected with me Whenever I do upload new content or I go live each week, you will be um, you will be informed. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for trusting me um, in the first place. Thank you for trusting me to bring you news and information. Okay, all right, y'all. Listen, the shutdowns. Okay, we're talking about banks shutting down, shutting their doors in Lebanon, in the country of Lebanon. The shutdowns, the article says, follow a series of holdups across the country over the past month with at least five separate banks. Five separate banks, y'all, held up by depositors last Friday alone in attempt to retrieve savings that were frozen in the banking system. What's really going on, y'all? Listen. Millions, millions of Lebanese citizens have been locked out of their accounts. Did y'all hear me? Millions of Lebanese. I'm reading from CNN, y'all. I'm not making this up. Millions of Lebanese citizens have been locked out of their accounts after the country plunged into financial crisis in October of 2019. With local currency, since losing 90% of its value, more than three quarters of the population have been pushed into poverty and most are unable to pay for basic items. Did y'all just hear what I said? Now, it sounds like to me, you know, I don't know the history of Lebanon. I would need to do my research. If you have some insight, please share it here on the channel. But it sounds like to me that based on, you know, whatever happened in the country, something obviously happened um, on or around sometime around October 2019 that, you know, according to the article, caused the country to plunge into a financial crisis. The local currency. OK, have you all heard talks about even in the United States about the dollar losing value you know i think we can all agree that we can't really buy much for a dollar now can we i remember times when gas was less than a dollar a gallon do y'all remember times like that some of this sounds a lot like what has been happening here in the united states or what some may say could possibly happen right listen to this y'all i'm gonna say it again millions okay we're not talking about one or two or hundreds millions of lebanese citizens have been locked out of their accounts locked out of their accounts y'all these are people who went in they opened an account you know signed the paperwork whatever they had to do 
and they put their faith and trust in the banks to keep their money, right? And now all of a sudden, they're locked out of their accounts or they have been locked out of their accounts. After the country, the article says, plunged into financial crisis in October 2019 with local currency. Okay, what is the name of the currency of Lebanon? Does anyone know? Please put it in the chat if you know. With local currency, since losing 90% of its value, more than three quarters of the population, the article says, have been pushed into poverty and most are unable to pay for basic items. What are basic items? Food, water, shelter, possibly clothing basic items they can't pay that according to the article y'all they can't even pay for basic items what if that has something like that happen here in the United States would you be able to sustain this is why I report world news I want us to think about could something like this happen in the United States if something like this happened in the United States what would we do about it All right, I'm gonna continue. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Plainsman, the Lebanese pound. Okay, thank you so much. I didn't know that I'm learning. Okay, um, this on this channel, I share information. I also learn from you also, thank you. So the Lebanese pound, okay, the Lebanese pound has since lost 90% of its value. How does something like that even happen, y'all? The Lebanese pound, has lost 90% of its value. More than three quarters of the population have been pushed into poverty. Three, that's more than 75%, y'all. So let's put that into perspective. I'm gonna just use plain numbers. So let's say, of course it's not this small, but let's say there were 100 people, right? Out of 100 people, let's say if the population was 100, I'm just using, you know, simple numbers, right? If 100 people if there were 100 people in Lebanon, three quarters, 75% would be 75 people. So that would mean that if the population was 100, that would mean 75 out of 100 people live in poverty. So, okay, math, math, time for math. So how many would that leave that were not living in poverty? Can someone do the math real quick? I know the answer, but can someone do the math? So if there are 100 people in the population, again, which you, we're using simple numbers, if there were 100 people in Lebanon and 75% of the people live in poverty, that would be 75 people. If 75% of the population and there were 100 people, if 75% of them live in poverty, that would be 75 people. 75 out of 100 people living in poverty. How many would not be living in poverty? Can anyone do the math on that? That would be 25 people. 25 out of 100 not living in poverty. Can you imagine being one of the 25 who were not living in poverty? 25%. That's right. Thank you, Plainsman. Plainsman also shared because of new events in the world, things may get worse fast all over the world. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly why. Thank you so much for saying that. That's exactly why I report on world news. You know, and a lot of times, and let me know if you see this as well, a lot of times it seemed like, um, you know, based on certain media outlets, they don't want us to know the things that are happening in the world uh, for example I don't know if you let me know if you know this or not Plainsman but or anyone else who is watching there were some rumors now you all know I like to report factual information right um, and I didn't do a separate video on this I thought about it but I said you know what let me just wait but speaking of things happening around the world and how sometimes it seems like news is hidden from us you know there were talks today that something happened in china so right there was a possible uh coup okay overthrowing of the government allegedly in china but guess what you know all of my sources that you know my online sources 
I haven't been able to confirm that. Um, other news sites, they're not reporting on that. And from my understanding, it's very hard to get media and news out of China because of the type of rule that, you know, the Chinese government has over its people. So all we can do is just, you know, wait to hear more or to learn more. Um, I didn't want to put that information out there and cause a panic, but I definitely, definitely feel like there's something that we need to pay attention to, you know, not to get off topic, but, you know, China has been in recent talks, the, uh, the leader of China, um, Jinping, I believe is his name. I hope I didn't uh, mispronounce that. He's been in talk with in talks with Putin. Um, today is September 24th, and you know I did see this also. I didn't do a video on this, but there were allegedly talks that there was supposed to be some type of world event on September 24th. And lo and behold, here we are wondering, okay, what happened with China? There are rumors that something happened in China. <laughs> but again, I don't want to cause any you know fear or panic in anyone. Um, I'm definitely keeping my eyes and ears, you know, tune in for more information on that. But I definitely feel like that's something we need to be concerned about because number one, from my understanding, the U.S. and China are like the number one trade partners for each other. Um, based on my research in recent years, the Chinese government, Chinese military has grown, um, excuse me, strengthened in power advanced in technology, advanced in their military. And we all know that what a month ago, um, or earlier this month, I can't remember the date, but um, Speaker of the House Pelosi took a trip to Taiwan. China was not happy about the US presence there. So the fact that, you know, there is something possibly allegedly that's going on in China, that's worth us paying attention to I feel like okay thank you for mentioning that but let me get back on topic here so we're again thank you all to those who are just tuning in now live I'm here to let you know that banks are shutting down in Lebanon okay all right according to the article in August an armed man stormed a bank in the capital city of Beirut and threatened to take the lives of hostages and himself if the bank did not allow him to withdraw money from his frozen account. Did y'all hear that? Now, I just did a video where I talked about if people fight over televisions during Black Friday. Y'all make sure you check out that video. Um, later on, I'll maybe post a link towards the end of this video where you can just click it and watch it. But I told you all, if people are willing to fight, like get into a real brawl, right? over televisions you know during black friday televisions and different things that are on sale that they feel like for whatever reason they need if they're willing to do that imagine what people will do in situations where food is scarce and they need to get to food or in this particular case you know money is frozen their money is tied up and they need to get money for whatever reason to care for loved one pay bills um to you know pay their mortgage to stay in their home whatever reason this article, I just read this, y'all. This is from CNN. It says in August, just last month, okay, according to CNN, a man, an armed man stormed a bank in the capital city of Beirut and threatened to take the lives of hostages and himself if the bank did not allow him to withdraw money from his frozen account. Think about that, y'all. Claiming, the article continues by saying, claiming he needed the funds to pay for his father's medical expenses, caring for a loved one. Okay, the uh, the man surrendered to police after the bank gave him some of his savings. Okay, it doesn't say they gave him all. It says they gave him some of his savings. Having been cheered on by groups outside the bank, the article says the man was held as a national hero. He was hailed as a national hero by many on social media. One anonymous security source speculated to CNN that the man's methods could be replicated by others. Meaning if he, you know, went to that extent, other people, if he went to that extent and he was able to get some of his money, 
you know they're basically saying that other people could have gone through the same extent to get money as well last Wednesday the article continues last Wednesday a woman took twenty thousand dollars from her account after storming a bank armed with what she later claimed was a toy weapon in order to fund her sister's cancer treatment again caring for a loved one okay that's according to state news later the same day listen to this y'all later the same day an armed man entered a bank in the mountain city of alley and retrieved some of his and retrieved some of his trap savings before handing himself in to authorities look at the measure that people are going through y'all to get access to their uh, money in the bank what are your thoughts on that The glass window, it says, of a bank is broken after a woman stormed it, stormed it on September 14th. I'm going to flip the candle, uh, the candle. I'm going to flip the camera around, y'all, so that you can see how this woman went through the window of the bank. Look at this, y'all. Hold on just a minute. I'm going to flip the camera around. Do y'all see that? Look how she went through the window of the bank, y'all. And in the caption, it says, do y'all see that? You may can't see the caption is good. It says the glass window of a bank is broken after a woman stormed it on September the 14th. What y'all think about that? And look how they had they had to have soldiers guarding the banks look at this y'all i'm gonna flip the camera again look at this y'all it says lebanese army soldiers secure the premises near a bank in Beru after a depositor stormed the branch demanding access to his money look how they have the military out there y'all armed military and all people are trying to do is just whatever way they feel like they have to take <laughs> They're just trying to get access to their money. Okay. The article continues or concludes by saying the five banks held up Friday included one incident in the southern city of Gazia, where an armed man having poured gasoline on the floor of the bank. Y'all didn't hear me. This man, the article says the five banks held up Friday included one incident in the southern city. I think I'm right under a light, y'all, so I apologize if it's a glare. The five banks, the article says, held up Friday included one incident in the southern city of Gazier, where an armed man, listen to what he did, y'all. He's just trying to get his, his money out of the bank to take care of whatever he need to take care of. Listen to what he did, y'all. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I had some comments coming through. I'm just not seeing them. Listen, y'all. I'm a, Let me say this, and I'm going to get to the comments. The five banks held up Friday included one incident in the southern city of Gazier where an armed man, having poured gasoline on the floor of the bank, threatened to burn the building down if not given access to his money. State news agency NNA reported he retrieved $19,200 and passed the money on to, and I'm sorry, let me start over. He retrieved $19,200 and passed the money on to to someone waiting for him outside the branch before handing himself into authorities. What do y'all think about this information? Let me get to some of the comments. I'm sorry, y'all. When the comments come up, I may not have been looking at the screen, so I, I apologize. I'm not trying to ignore anyone. <laughs> right, right. Um, they are tracking transactions over $600, um, particularly, particularly, um, specifically rather, um, even transactions that are done with Cash App, PayPal, they're looking at all of that. Uh, let's see. Okay. Someone shared uh, keep cash at home and just pay bills through the bank. Yep, I see a lot. Um, I see a lot more and more people uh, talking about doing that as a possible solution. <laughs> wow. So you all let me know your thoughts on this topic. Um, again, y'all, 
I'm not trying to scare anyone, but I want you all to see these are the things that are happening in the world. And if it can happen over there, what if something happened here in the United States? What if we got in a similar situation? Um, all it took was just a few people to take, you know, whatever measures they felt like they needed to take. And it messed it up for everyone else, right? Um, do you feel like the banks are right or wrong? They're closing. Okay, again, this article comes from CNN. And the title of the article says, Lebanese banks to shut indefinitely after a flurry of holdups. Okay. Um, wow. Someone said it's coming one way or another. We got to get prepared, y'all. I hope it doesn't. But we got to get prepared. I just want to show you all the title of the article in case you want to research it. Let me show you all. I'm going to flip the camera. Okay, again, it says Lebanese banks to shut indefinitely after flurry of holdups. Okay, and this is one of the banks here. Looks like it says Blom Bank. Okay, all right. Well, listen, thank you all so much for supporting the channel. It's starting to get dark here and I'm about to get on the road. Thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your Friday evening, your Friday night to tune in and get news and information, uh, commentary you can use. Someone shared we have to watch Europe closely to see what their governments do to their people. Exactly. Okay, because it seems like, let me know if you agree or disagree. It seems like, you know, when the leaders get in these world meetings, it seems like a lot of times that they're trying to work together, get on the same page, same agenda. And so... You know, it wouldn't be surprising based on what I've seen, the research I've done, information I shared. It wouldn't be surprising if they tried to do something like that here in our country. But again, y'all, take the information that's being shared. Do your research. Okay, don't just take my word for it. I want you to do your research. Make a plan to prepare and protect your family. Okay. Thank you all so much for trusting me to bring you news and information. I appreciate each and every one of you all. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, y'all. Y'all take care. I'm about to go now. It's getting dark and I'm about to start driving soon. Again, thank you so much for supporting and subscribing to the channel. Have a good weekend as well. I believe that's Mike. Have a good weekend as well. All right, y'all take care. Stay tuned. Check the channel daily, y'all. I'm going to be doing my best to bring you news and information. There's so much going on. Um, so much going on in the world, but I pray that you and your family are doing well. I pray that you be blessed. And we're going to be all right, y'all. Because the things that we're doing today, yesterday and today, is going to help us be in a better position tomorrow to sustain, survive through the times that we're facing now and for what's to come. Thank you all so much for supporting Andrea Beat CB. I'll see you in another episode, y'all. Take care.